All right, everyone, here we go. Part four of our journey through the book of James, the letter from James, which is for us for today. Amen. If you uh, have been following along with us, we are on chapter two of the letter of James. If you missed the other videos, feel free to check those out. The links will be in the description. You can also find them uh, farther down in the YouTube channel, or you can visit our Facebook page and find all of those links there as well. So I hope you guys are ready. Uh, it's a little rainy outside. I'm trying something a little different here. Actually came into the church to record today, so we'll see uh, how it goes. But yes, let's dive in to James chapter 2. Right off the bat, and again, just like in chapter 1, in chapter 2, James hits us right at the beginning. Now, he didn't write it with chapters and verses. That was added later. We know that. But he says, my dear brothers and sisters, in verse 1 of chapter 2, my dear brothers and sisters, how can you claim to have faith in our glorious Lord Jesus Christ if you favor some people over others? And then he goes on, you'll see it in here in verse 1, but you'll also find it in verse 4 and verse 9. Um, actually, let's, let's go ahead and read those. So he says in verse 1, uh, How can you claim to have faith in our glorious Lord Jesus Christ if you favor some people over others? And then in verse 4, he says, Doesn't this discrimination show that your judgments are guided by evil motives? And then again in verse 9, but if you favor some people over others, you are committing a sin. You are guilty of breaking the law. So I want to talk about this for a little bit. Favoritism and discrimination. James is very clear that both of these, both of these things, favoritism and discrimination, both come, uh, both come from and are guided by evil motives. He says it. Uh, right there in verse 4, doesn't this discrimination show that your judgments are guided by evil motives? Now, that's a scary thing to realize. And I want to challenge us, friends, to think about this clearly. Judge yourselves. Scripture says, judge yourselves so that you won't need to be judged by God. If you are favoring certain people over others, then you need to repent. We need to repent if we are favoring certain people over others right now. If you are discriminating against certain people, you need to repent. Repent means to turn around, turn away from whatever you're doing and turn towards God. Repent. This favoritism, this discrimination towards certain people or against certain people is it's evil. It's sin. And we need to repent. Listen, James goes on to say in verse 13, there will be no mercy for those who have not shown mercy to others. But if you have been merciful, God will be merciful when he judges you. So again, if, if this is you, and trust me, I get it. We're all struggling right now. We're all struggling right now, but this should be bringing us together. The fact that we're all trying to get through this together should be bringing us together, not dividing us. This is, this is not an opportunity for division. It's an opportunity for us to come together. And especially as followers of Christ, like James is saying, there should be no favoritism, no discrimination from us. We should be the most merciful people in all the world. The world should be looking at us as an example of what it is to be merciful, of what it is to not, uh, to not show favoritism, to not um, discriminate. Amen. So let's continue on. That was verse 13 of chapter 2. Let's look at verse 14. Oops, flipped my page too soon. James says to us, what good is it, dear brothers and sisters, if you say you have faith, but don't show it by your actions? 
Now, we know that we need to walk by faith and not by sight, as Scripture tells us. And it's okay if your walking by faith looks a little different than maybe my walking by faith or whatever. And here's an example. In this season right now, you walking by faith in obedience to God might um, might look like you staying at home by faith. Or it might be that you continue to work, to go out into the public and work by faith as the Lord leads you. Or you might not be able to work and you might feel called to serve, to serve the poor, to serve um, people that are, are suffering and struggling right now. Do that. Do it by faith and trust the Lord that he will take care of you and he will provide for you. Or honestly, this isn't my thing, but you might by faith choose to peacefully, respectfully protest what's going on. It's such a blessing to live in a country where we can live out our faith. And I'm just saying that it can look different for each one of us. But whatever you do, and this is what I think James is getting at, let your faith be shown in your actions. Whatever it is that that God is leading you to do, and you're stepping out in obedience to him and doing it in faith or by faith, let it be that. Let it be because God told you to do it and you're just trying to obey him. You're just trying your best to obey what God is, is showing you to do. What I want us to avoid, especially in this time and in this season, church, is allowing fear to make decisions for us. Don't ever let fear make any decision for you. Okay? <laughs> the devil is a liar, a liar and a thief and when he can use fear to make decisions for you or for to, to influence you to make decisions or to do things, um, you can actually lose sight of what God is calling you to do because you're so bound up in fear that fear is making decisions for you. You think that you're making decisions. You think that you're being independent and doing what is, is right but it's really your own fears, your own, what did James say? <laughs> your own evil motives. You're being guided by evil motives if fear is allowing you to, or is if fear is causing you to make decisions that are contrary to what God is saying. And now to, to wrap up, this is our conclusion. Between verses 14 and 26, the whatever, second half of the second chapter of James. All of this is kind of pulling together this common thread that James is, is showing us, which is this call to obedience to God and the importance of our faith, of living out our faith in God, in obedience to him. And in verse 19, I just wanted to point this out. In verse 19, James is clear that just our faith alone, just saying that we believe in God, oh, I believe in God, you know, rah, rah, it's not enough. It's not enough. He says, you say you have faith for you believe that there is one God. Good for you. Even the demons believe this and they tremble in terror. They tremble in terror at the name of the Lord Amen. Even demons know that God exists. That's nothing new, but at least they tremble in terror knowing that God exists and knowing that he's a righteous judge, knowing that they, they themselves will be judged. So if we believe that God exists, then we need to show it by the way we live, by living a life that um, lives up to and, and mirrors all that God has spoken in his word and through his son, Jesus, Jesus said that his words would never pass away. They're never going to lose their power. They're never going to become um, void or useless. We need to look at what Jesus said in the word of God. We need to look at what the father is doing 
and then we just simply need to do it. So, my encouragement for you today from the second chapter of James is to continue to look for those ways that the Lord is leading you to be obedient to Him and to His Word. Remember, He will not contradict His Word. The Spirit of God, if you say, oh, you know, I felt like the Holy Spirit was leading me to do this, but it's directly uh, contrary to the Word of God, then you misunderstood or some other spirit was speaking to you because the Spirit of God will always confirm the Word of God. It will always, the Holy Spirit will always give honor to the Father. Like Jesus said, I give honor to my Father and therefore He honors me. And that's what we want, church. We want to be people who are led by the Spirit, grounded in the Word, and that bring glory and honor to the Father. I love you guys. I bless you. Talk to you tomorrow.